if you are interested in finding out tactics, techniques, ways of getting better at dealing with customers, getting better at supporting customers on the front line and, and creating those relationships, then I, I would hope that Help Desk Habits is for you. Paul Green's MSP Marketing Podcast. The big, big, big interview. Hi there, Paul. My name is Mark Copeman. Uh, I'm the author of two books currently, uh, Help Desk Habits and MSP Secrets Revealed. And uh, on top of that, I've been in the channel for the last, uh, what, 12 years or so. I love every moment of it. I think the IT industry is a fabulous place to be. Yes, it is. And it's what's particularly fabulous about it is meeting people like you, Mark. And I'm uh, genuinely delighted to have become friends with you over the last couple of years because I needed a few more friends. And also uh, to be able to invite you back onto this podcast. You have featured before, but you're back here as part of Authors Month. So we have had some epic authors as part of this special series of guest interviews. And I did want to make sure that we got an MSP specific author in there as well. So you've written a couple of books and let's let's focus in first of all on help desk habits because I think I'm right in saying that was your first book what was the kind of the big message of help desk habits uh, yes it was and I'm not sure you should really be including me on an epic list but I'll, I'll go with an okay list I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that um, and, and like everybody so many people say to you oh I want to write a book oh I really w wish I could write a book and so on uh, and when I exited uh, my SaaS business customer thermometer in uh, 2018, I kind of swung back in this very chair and I thought, I don't really know what to do next. I didn't have a plan. And so I thought, OK, well, maybe I should write the book that I've always wanted to write. And so this was born out of the previous, uh, what, five years or so of working with hundreds of MSPs around the world on their CSAT, on their customer service, on their customer experience. And I saw lots of common issues and thought I should address them. And so I, I decided to, uh, to become that sort of first time author. Uh, I actually, I loved the process for the, for the most part uh, until you got through to the sort of like the third edit at the end. And then I thought the thing was terrible. However, um, three plus years on, it continues to sell every day and it blows my mind. So it's, uh, it's a proud moment. It's a lovely moment to receive your first proof through the post. I'll never forget that. Yes, I bet it is. And just, just let us, I've been asking some of our, our author guests to, to give us the behind the scenes of what it's like to be an author. You sell a, a copy or a couple of copies of Help Desk Habits every day. I'm guessing it's, it's like a, I mean, I've got a copy somewhere in my bookshelves here, but I'm guessing it's about 10, 10 pounds, 12 pounds on the cover price. How much of that, once Amazon's had its share and, uh, and the publisher, if there's a publisher have had their share, how much of that actually gets to you? Yeah, and, and you're making a presumption it's only two copies a day, Paul. You know, some days it's way, it's actually genuinely way more than that, and I can't believe it. Uh, every day is different. Uh, from memory, um, uh, I, I think I earn about three or four pounds per book, something along those lines. Um, and I mean, I, I don't know if you want to get into the whole Amazon uh, direct publishing thing, uh, but it, it, it's a tremendous way for people to, you know, like me, who was never ever going to get hold of a publisher in a sensible mm -hmm. fashion. Uh, to put something out to the world in, in a very, very easy way. Oh, yeah. I mean, Amazon, we, we won't go down that route, but Amazon has completely democratized um, um, niche publishing because that's, that's what we're talking about here is, is very niche publishing. And, and clearly selling three copies a day is, uh, is, is a very big thing. Uh, that was sarcasm <laughs> there, so I apologize for that. So um, what's the, the, obviously Help Disc Habits was, was where you got started. You, I know you have an enormous amount to talk about and, and when it comes to, to habits. Who, who should read Help Disc Habits? Is it for uh, service delivery managers? Is it for technicians? What level of technicians? Is it for the owners? Is it for, is it for everyone? Uh, probably, I hate saying this, but probably all of the above. Um, and I, I, I know that because that there's an online program off the back of that, because guess what? You don't get rich being uh, a, a, an author, a self-published author. So the book actually formed the basis for the online program. And I know from that uh, that people right across MSP businesses, all across all the functions have been through that program. And I, you know, I, we joke about the three copies a day. Uh, somebody, or 25 copies were bought on um, a couple of days ago as we sit here and record this. And I, I'll never know, but I have a suspicion that somebody bought those 25 copies to give to everybody in the office because I know that that's happened before. So yeah, if you if you are interested in finding out uh, ha tactics, techniques, ways of 
uh, getting better at dealing with customers, getting better at, at supporting customers on the front line and, and creating those relationships, uh, then I, I would hope that Help Desk Habits is for you. And I guess the thing I would tack on to that, I, I brought this habits word in because I've seen over the years, you know, you, you pick up on, on tactics and so on, and, and very, very quickly you revert back to the stuff you've always done. And there's some physiological reasons for that, which I absolutely won't bore you with now unless you ask me about them. So I thought, let's bring in the habits element so that, you know, there is a chance, therefore, people take on a particular uh, tactic or, or something that I suggest, there's 50 in the book, uh, that there's a chance that that will stick over time uh, by the use of habits and you know, sort of overlaying that. Uh, across all the different uh, tactics and techniques which I talk about. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a great observation. I'm sure, Mark, that you've read Atomic Habits, which is a great book by James Clear. Um, Absolutely. And fact, James was too busy to come on uh, on, on to Walker's Month, so maybe, <laughs> maybe sent, we'll get him on. He sent me instead, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but he'll uh, maybe he'll be here for next year's. But some of the things that and, and for every MSP listening, watching this, Atomic Habits is a must read or a, or a must listen. The other one I throw in though, along those lines is Charles Duhigg, uh, The Power of Habits as well, yes. which is the first one I read. And some of the studies into uh, it's a lot of this research, I guess, is only about 30, 40 years old. That's, that's when they sort of discovered the stuff that's going on inside the brain. And he describes all sorts of different uh, sort of psychological experiments and, and observations that, that he's done his research around. It's absolutely fascinating. So, yeah, that's what really got me into it. Yeah, no, it is. It's, a, it's an utterly fascinating area, particularly where they're looking at leveraging how we actually work as opposed to how people thought the brain worked in, in a lot of the productivity advice. Of, of, of yesteryear, as it were. Right, so let's move on to your second book. So you, what, what drove you to want to pull together uh, what, what became now the first volume of MSP Secrets Revealed? I guess my love of the collaboration that goes on in our industry. Having come from a marketing background, if you had a, a, a vendor or sorry, a customer asking two agencies to work together, both sides would sort of nod politely and then laugh behind the scenes. It's so different in our industry. And I, you know, I see competitors collaborating in the same town or, or, or city. And, and I think it's a wonderful thing. And that is what inspired me really to, to write the book. I've always, always loved listening to people talking about their war stories, you know, explaining how they do things, uh, which I guess is where the, the secrets word came from. And I thought, wouldn't it be brilliant to, to go out to the industry? You know, it's cheating a little bit because I didn't actually write every single word. Uh, but let me tell you, it's not straightforward curating either. So it's a combination of, of, of um, I think it's about 85 different IT professionals' words uh, coupled with with a sprinkling of my words around the edge and some and some editing as well. Obviously, I didn't need to edit your secret, Paul, because it was absolutely perfect. Ah, get out, get out. Um, as a as a, um, a former professional journalist myself, it was it was how I made my living for thirteen years. I completely agree with you. It's it's harder to edit other people's work than it is to you know to create your own work. So I think with with MSP Secrets Revealed, you probably made your life hard there. Um, but it was such a such an original book. Uh, did that was that twenty twenty? Yeah, it was it was just as the as the pandemic was starting actually. Um, and uh, I, you know, I thought it would take me maybe three months to, to pull, pull together 100 odd secrets. And uh, it took me closer to nine, I think, and then another four months to edit and write and all the rest of it. So it was it was way later than I thought it didn't matter. Uh, and it was it was quite uh, it was quite therapeutic, I suppose, to release it at that very, very difficult time for the world. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, out it went. And, and as, a, as a result, everybody that actually submitted a secret, I sent them a copy of the book and, and said thank you. I, I signed it as well. So, unfortunately, the value went down a little. Uh, but uh, nobody seemed to mind about that. So, no, it was um, <laughs> you've got your copy there. Look at that. There we go. I have. I have. And, and I'll let you into a secret, which I don't think I've told you before, um, which is um, this, this book, MSP Secrets Revealed, um, is, is, it doesn't only, well, the reason it has a, a, a little place on my desk is because if I'm stuck for something to talk about in the podcast, or if I've got to write some content for my website and I don't know what to talk about, I dip into this. And there's, there's actually, there's three or four um, books 
uh, all MSP books. Uh, we've got Jennifer Bleem's book there. Uh, we've got Nigel Moore's book, yeah. and then there's your book. Um, so thank you. So you're actually went because even even prolific content producers such as myself have days where we sit there with our head in our hands and we're thinking, what what am I going to write about? And the answer is always to be inspired by other people. And in fact, this is why I'm so excited because I've, I've nearly used all of your book now. Uh, I'm so excited that you have a second edition. So I believe that as as we're sitting here now at the start of 2023, do you know how many months you are away from getting this published or are you still sort of stuck in editing hell with that? Oh, look at that. There we go. For those of you watching on there YouTube, that, you can see the exclusive I'm, I'm blue cover. It's amazing. There's nothing inside at the moment, but um, it's, it's basically inside. like the, the, the red cover of the first edition, but it's blue. Do you, do you um, how, how far into the process are you, Mark? So I've got all my secrets now. I'm in very much editing phase and um, I, I don't know an exact date of release yet, but I, I would hope that it will be uh, three years after the first one. So if, if, if I shoot for April, I will keep my fingers crossed on that. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get to number two because obviously if you're running out of content, Paul, I need to help you out a little bit. So um, hopefully you uh, and many thousands of others will, will, will benefit from uh, many other people's advice uh, with a little sprinkling of mine put in there as well. Oh, you're just too kind. You really are. So thank you. And do you think there'll be a third? I, I realise asking an author in the in the middle of production hell on their second book, asking them about the third is is probably the wrong question. But uh, in fact, don't even answer I, that one. I, I don't even answer that one. I don't know. Is is the short answer? I don't know. What's interesting is that um, I there's some a change of themes. Um, you know, when I bear in mind the submissions for the previous one would have been four years previous. Uh, so I, I'm I'm really enjoying the the mergers and acquisitions element to this. I I, I felt that there will be more of that sort of stuff coming through, uh, with the industry so buoyant, you know, so many things going on. I thought it was interesting to get uh, people's experiences in that space as well. So that wasn't part of the first book, uh, and that's absolutely going to be part uh, of the second one. Okay, final question, Mark, and I'm going to ask you to reveal uh, a, a secret, a secret in the soon-to-be-published book. Can you delve into, and I appreciate you may need to go over to a Word document on your computer or something, but can you delve into your submissions, go and grab one for us and give us the edited highlights of one of the secrets that's going to be in your upcoming book? That is massively putting me on the spot because I, I need to reach for, for all my bits and pieces. Can, can I can I give you one from the, the from the current one, which is a is a bit of a favourite of mine? Is that going to okay. be acceptable to you? Yeah, go on then. Go on. That means you'll have to come back all onto right. the show next year to uh, to, to talk uh, about the the second there we one. Go. I'll, I'll keep it super brief, and and it's very very hard to choose to choose a favourite. But one of the things I think is so 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 appropriate in in our MSP world is the concept of don't sell commodity. And I, I love that concept. And it, it's all born around the fact that you can buy a cup of coffee for a pound, uh, for a dollar, for a, you know $5. Uh, and if you actually trawl around the internet, the most expensive cup you'll find is about 100 bucks. And it's essentially the same thing. But what is the difference in value? It's the wrap that is put around the edge. It's the customer experience element. It's the people you're buying it from. It's the location. It's, it's all those things. And I think in our increasingly commoditized industry, a lot of people trying to sell the same things to similar people, having that wrap around the edge and not selling the commodity, but where reminding yourself that people buy from people is such an important part of the equation. So um, yeah, that's just one off the top of my head uh, from, uh, from episode one, but there's plenty more gems coming in episode two. Okay, Mark, thank you so much for joining me on the show yet again. I know you will be a perennial guest in the years ahead, especially if you do keep publishing these books. I also know that, as you said earlier, that being an author doesn't pay the bills. It's just a very nice thing to do. It's good positioning. It's great to get involved with lots of interesting people. What is your day job? And tell us how we can get in touch with you. Well, aside from my Help Desk Habits program, uh, on the 1st of November uh, 2022, let's date that correctly, uh, really excited to join um, a, a dedicated MSP marketing agency called Wingman MSP Marketing. I've been working with them for the last 12 months or so, and it was an, a natural partnership. So I became a shareholder, a director, and employee of the team. And it's now brilliant because I used to be solo and I'd spent a lot of time advising people and they would tell me it was great advice, Mark, but unfortunately do very little with it. And it was driving me crazy. 
So I needed a team behind me to to actually deliver on the uh, the crazy ideas that I come up with and, and the suggestions that I make for people. So uh, yeah, if you visit uh, wingmanmspmarketing.com, uh, you'll find out all about us and a bit more about me. I even have some nice photos taken of me, Paul. So I look nearly as good as you do, uh, as, but it was there was a lot of uh, Photoshop needed, I'm afraid. Paul Green's MSP Marketing Podcast.